Hey guys, the Firebird is here. Today I'm doing a part 2 to one of my previous videos. And that is the video where I talk about which characters got cut from the movies, Soul Bitch, which means they got turned into other characters, or Save, meaning that they were not in the movie they were meant to be, but they will later reappear in a future movie. So we're gonna continue that video. And just a heads up, if I miss any character from the movies I'm about to mention or from the previous video, feel free to comment down below and I will be sure to do a part 3 where I talk about the characters that I miss. Because I'm certainly sure that people will not fail to let me know. They're gonna be like, FIRE! YOU MISS THIS! FIRE! YOU retard! YOU MISS HIM! I can see those comments already. So in this video, I'm gonna be covering Dark of the Moon, Age of Extinction and The Last Night. Mostly because I don't think there's that many missing characters compared to Revenge of the Fallen and the first movie. So first off, we should begin with Dark of the Moon. So an actor called James Avery claimed in an interview that he was gonna play a new Autobot, not just any new Autobot, Silverbolt. Now according to him, he was going to play Silverbolt in Dark of the Moon, but at the end of the day, this never happened. Even James Avery's representatives mentioned that he was gonna play Silverbolt in Dark of the Moon. But at the end, we never saw that happen. Which either James Avery is a huge liar, or Michael Bay changed his mind because he wanted to save more money for the explosions. Which the latter seems to be the most likely option to me. So let's get this one out of the way. The twins, Skits and Mothflap were supposed to be in Dark of the Moon. And they were, as cameos, only in vehicle form though. I'm not even sure if this counts as a cut character or not, but during the early production of Dark of the Moon, fans pleaded to Michael Bay to not include the twins in Dark of the Moon because they were pretty hated characters. Michael Bay agreed and the twins were just removed from the film, except for one scene where they were in. However, in the comic adaptation of Dark of the Moon, once Ironhide dies, they jump in to defend Bombi from Sentinel Prime and they end up getting killed. Supposedly this was the scene that was meant to appear in Dark of the Moon of the twins dying. Either way the twins were gonna die, but Michael Bay decided to listen to popular demand and he removed the twins from Dark of the Moon, with the exception of one scene. Technically they were cut from the rest of the movie, so I'm gonna count this as cut characters. Hey, you're free to get mad at me in the comments down below. Okay, so next up we got Ultra Magnus. Yes, Ultra Magnus was the original model slash concept that for Sentinel Prime. He was supposed to have Sentinel Prime's role of being an all about trader. His name is even listed in a lot of early Sentinel Prime concept art. But at the end of the day, Ultra Magnus was removed from the movie and Sentinel Prime was added. And honestly, I think we're much better off for that. Can you imagine the fan backlash if Michael Bay made Ultra Magnus the main bad guy of Dark of the Moon? Like that will really piss people off. So Michael Bay, thank you for not making Ultra Magnus the bad guy. Another character we have is Warpath. So Warpath was originally an orange and yellow roadbuster with some minor differences here and there. However, he was later changed into two characters, Roadbuster and Topspin. So yes, Warpath was salvaged to make two other characters, two other records. And honestly, I'm happy for that because this Warpath is not a tank. And the existence of any character called Warpath who's not a tank should be considered a crime against humanity. So good on you, Bay, for not messing up Warpath. Well, he didn't appear in Dark of the Moon and that's kind of upsetting, but at least we still have the games. Next up we got the Dreads. So early on, the Dreads had very different names and slightly different models. Dreadwind turned into Crankcase, Hooligan turned into Crowbar, and Dirtbag turned into Hatchet. So yeah, these ones right here are pretty early working names, but they will later change. Except for Hooligan, which will later go on to be used in the last night, but that was also changed. Wow, tough break again. So another character was Blitzwing. Now hear me out. Blitzwing was supposed to look like Shockwave. I'm not making this up. Blitzwing was later changed to be Shockwave. So we don't really know for sure if Blitzwing looked like Shockwave or if Blitzwing was his own model, but Blitzwing was supposed to appear in Dark of the Moon. 
until he was replaced by Shockwave, which it's pretty ironic considering our modern situation of Blitzwing here looking like Starscream. It's actually nothing new, this goes back all the way to Dark of the Moon, which I find kind of funny. <laughs> Blitzwing, copying people since 2010. Another character that I recently talked about in my Forgotten Warriors series is Steelja. And Steelja was that cute Cybertronian robot dog that we saw in the concept art. Hasbro even made a toy out of him, and he makes quite a few appearances in plenty of comics for Dark of the Moon. So Steelja was supposed to be in Dark of the Moon, and he was also featured in a lot of other media besides the concept art. So we still don't know how late into production Steelja was caught at, but we do know that Steelja did in fact exist that he was in fact supposed to be part of the records, and it's also very possible that Steelja will have some major fighting scenes in the movie, considering his heavy involvement in the comics and some of the toys. Next up we got Grindor, or Blackout, whatever. I'll just say Blackout looking Decepticon. So in the Super Bowl spot for Dark of the Moon, we saw a Decepticon that looks a lot like Blackout and Grindor, but in the trailer and in the final film, he's not seen anywhere. So yeah, it appears that at the beginning they were gonna reuse more character models for the Optimus Prime rage scene, and Blackout was gonna be one of the unlucky Decepticons to get killed by the Autobot leader. However, this did not happen. So Blackout looking Decepticon, you got lucky. Another character that was probably supposed to be in Dark of the Moon was Rollbar. Now, this is a tricky one because we don't really have any clear statements as to whether he was supposed to be in Dark of the Moon. But back in the day, there was plenty of leaks and rumors saying that this vehicle right here was going to turn into the Autobot Rollbar. However, it's also very likely that this vehicle right here was part of Michael Bay's disinformation campaign. Now, what that is, is that Michael Bay will often get some vehicles to the set of Transformers and line them up with the Autobots or Decepticons to give the illusion that the car is gonna turn into a Transformer or be part of the Decepticons or the Autobots. Now, the same case happened here with Rollbar, but we don't really have any confirmation if Rollbar was ever meant to be in the movie or not. We don't even have a toy out of him. So, all we can do is speculate. And I speculate that yeah, he was probably part of Michael Bay's misinformation campaign and not supposed to be in the movie, but hey, it's fun picturing what could have been. Okay, so now we move on to Age of Extinction. In Age of Extinction, we all know the story, there was supposed to be another Dinobot to appear in the movie, and that was Slash, but sadly she never made it into the movie. And yes, I called her a she, and I'm going to explain this in another Missing All About video, so stay tuned for that. But yeah, Slash had concept art and plenty of toys. So my guess here is that Slash was a last minute cut. Even in the last night, she still got a toy. So yeah, Slash was meant to appear in the movie, but considering we already had too many Dinobots, and the Autobots are looking too overpowered at this point, she was removed. There were also supposed to be like, a dozen Slashes, so yeah. That's probably why they were removed as well. So another character who was supposed to be in the movie was a female Decepticon named Widowmaker. Well, at least that was the early working name for her. The name was not intended to be the final name of the character. Widowmaker was supposedly going to take Stinger's role in the movie. She was going to be the female Bumblebee. However, like we all know, this did not happen and Widowmaker became Stinger. Who's the guy by the way? Stop shipping him with Bumblebee, please. Stop. Just Stop. Stop it. Get some help. Other characters that were cut from the Age of Extinction were the other two Dinobots, Slug and Snarl. These two Dinobots have plenty of concept art made out of them. They even made appearances in the Transformers Age of Extinction collector cards, meaning that at some point they were intended to be in the movie. Supposedly their roles would have been the same as the Age of Extinction Dinobots, just appear into the battlefield, kill a few Decepticons, and then disappear by the end of the movie. It is believed that these two were cut pretty early on in the movie's production, since unlike Slash, they didn't get an official poster. Also, because of the posters, now we can confirm that Slash was cut pretty late into the movie's development. So for the last night, we don't really have a lot of characters that were cut from the movie since not a lot of information on that has come out. But we do know that Optimus Primal was intended to be in the movie 
and a weird Predacon snake was also meant to be in the movie, supposedly for a scene on Cybertron. However, this did not happen and neither Optimus Primal or the Cybertronian snake appeared in the movie. Honestly, I would have loved to see Optimus Primal. I really like his concept art, I really do. So next up is a bunch of knights. Yes, I'm actually listing a whole bunch of Cybertronian knights that we didn't see in the movie. A lot of these designs are pretty unique and supposedly we were gonna see some of these appear in the movie, but at the end, we mostly saw a lot of Steelbane looking copies and the Red Knight of course. But as for all these other ones, they were pretty much absent from the movie. So since there's quite a few of them, I'm just gonna list them all in this one category. And yeah guys, that's about it. There's honestly not that much info for the last night, and that's because, well, it's only been one year, so it takes time, and I mean plenty of time for more information to come out, especially for characters that were cut from the movie. So until that time comes, this video ends right here. Well guys, I'm gonna end this video right here, if I missed any characters, feel free to let me know in the comments down below. Now, I did left out a few of them, but that's because I'm gonna save them for part 3, because this video has been going on for way too long, at least on my recording session. I don't know how this is gonna look once I finish editing, but so far, I've been talking non-stop for half an hour, so yeah, I want a break. Anyways, that's it for this video, like, comment, and subscribe, and I will see you guys in part 3, or the next video. I'll see what I upload first. So, bye guys. Hey guys, time for some Patreon shoutouts. Patreon shoutouts goes to Libalo Marufo, aka El, Tachin Morag, aka Mirage, and Trans Theories, aka Knockout. Make sure to go check out Trans Theories' channel, he makes Transformers videos much like me, and Trans Theories, your video is gonna come by the beginning of next month. It should be done by then, I'm just saying. Because I need to do quite a bit of research for that, because I don't know every Transformers YouTuber on YouTube, so... So that's going to take me a little while to prepare, but I'll get it done. Just you wait. So, if you guys wanna donate to my Patreon, link's gonna be in the description down below. A dollar will get you a shoutout in all of my videos, as well as a shoutout to your channel. And if you donate $3 or more than $3, you can request a video of your choosing. Yes, it could be Transformers related, it could be a Q&A, or it could even be from another franchise. So yeah, if you wanna donate, link's gonna be in the description down below and in the comments down below. So yeah, every bit of help is appreciated because, you know, with your help I can keep the channel going and put food on the table because, you know, I have a family to feed. So that's it for this video. Like, comment, and subscribe, and I will see you all in the next video. Stay fire, brothers.